We have finally made it to the day that we are all waiting for. We are on the very last lesson of our textbook, Module 10, Lesson 6, involving interpreting graphical displays. The pacing guide says all kinds of weird stuff. I have no idea what it's supposed to be there, but it's definitely not saying how many days we're supposed to be taking. But there are 14 resources to get through on this lesson, so let's get started so we can be done with our last lesson. In a recent Summer Olympics, a new world record was set for the longest women's swimming event, the 800 meter freestyle. The time was eight minutes, four seconds, and 79 hundredths of a second, and that's in minutes, or 484.879 seconds. The winning time for the women's 50 meter freestyle was 24.0 seconds. There are almost 20 different events in the women's swimming with times that fall between 24 seconds and 485 seconds. Now your middle school swim team, yes we have one of those, gathered data about the time it took to swim the length of the school pool. The results are shown below in the three graphical displays. Compare and contrast the three displays. Which best describes the data and explain your reasoning? These are the kind of things we're going to be learning to do in today's lesson. We're going to start off with a couple new vocabulary terms. The first one is distribution. The distribution of a set of data can be described as the center, spread, also known as variation, and overall shape of the data. We're going to highlight that term and then we're going to say in a symmetric di distribution the left side of the distribution looks like the right side of the distribution and the, and the means otherwise known as the average that's going to be located directly in the middle of that set of data. We also have another new term here although it's not in bold and that is skewed. The word skewed means off-center. So it's not going to be a symmetrical distribution like we saw in the previous definition. It's going to be skewed to one side or the other of the data. When there are extreme values or an outlier to the left of the mean, the distribution is called skewed left. Because the mean, remember the mean is the average of the data set is skewed to the left of the center. Extreme values to the right means that the result of the distribution is going to be skewed right because the mean or the average has shifted to the right in the data set. Skewed distributions are examples of distributions that are not going to be symmetric, just like I told you a minute ago. So, under the skewed left, it says that the mean or average is skewed left. From there, we're going to say that you use the median to describe the center of the distribution, and you use the inner quartile range to describe the spread of the data. If it's a symmetric distribution, then the mean or average is going to be slap dab in the center of the data set, so you're going to want to use the mean or average to describe your center of your distribution. And if it's skewed right, well, once again, it's, you're going to be going to have an average that's skewed to the right-hand side this time. We're going to use the median in this case to describe the center of the distribution, and we also are going to use the inner quartile range to describe the spread of the data. Now, I know that's an awful lot of words to be throwing at you. Let's see if they'll let us put it into practice. Right here, you have a graph that is a symmetrical distribution. There is exactly the same on both sides. You've got a high center, three on the right and left, and then two on the right and left of it. It's in a mirror image on both sides. It is a symmetrical distribution. And because of that, we would use the mean or the average to describe the data that is in this set. Now, for example one, we're going to be looking at data that is going to be skewed to the right. We know it's skewed to the right because you've got this one outlier that's way out here, way far away from everybody else. And because you have this outlier here that's way far away from everybody else, it's going to take and pull the data, everything over to the right-hand side. Um, so from there, what are we going to do? Well, they say first choose the appropriate measures. We're going to move through the step to choose the appropriate measures. The data 
Is the data evenly distributed between the left and the right side? The answer is no, so we're going to hit check on that. The next question is, is there an outlier? The answer is yes. That outlier is going to be 9, which we ended up putting seeing right there. And the next question they have for us, therefore the data is not symmetric and it's going to be skewed to the outlier, skewed to the right. All that checks. So we're going to use, since it's skewed, it's not, uh, it's not a um, symmetrical distribution. That means we're going to use the median to describe the center of the data set and the inner quartile range to describe the measure of variation. From here, we're going to select uh, that. Everything checks. Really easy to do this stuff. We can also look at the chart here and come up with some other things to describe the data. Now we have a dot plot, and first thing we want to know is how many students responded to the survey. Well, I've got three, one, two, three, four, five, that's eight, eight plus six, that's going to be 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So if I counted right, that means we got 19 students that responded to the survey. The median of these 19 students is, well, let's see here, half of 19, that's going to become 9. The ninth one is what we're going to want, or the tenth one is what we're going to want. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the median is going to be 2. This indicates that the number of states visited by students can be summarized by the single value of two states. The interquartile range is going to be 3 minus 1, also known as 2. It's going to be because you had the 3 and the 1 right there, the quartile 1 and the quartile 2. And this indicates that the spread of the data around the center is also going to be about two states. Check it. Everything checks. Real easy to interpret the data. It just takes a minute to look through it. Now it's going to be your turn to pause the video and work on example 1 by yourself. Go ahead and do that right now. Well, just looking at the graph, I see it's a very symmetrical graph. You have a center point, which is going to be 29, and you have an even number of points on every data value on other, each side. So, first question, is there an outlier? No, there's not. No outlier at all, therefore, and the data is going to be symmetric, so everything's balanced on each side of the center. Therefore, what are you going to use to describe the center of your data? You're going to use the mean or the average, and you're still going to be using the interquartile range, I believe, to discover the center. Let's see if I got that right. Nope, my bad. You're going to do the mean absolute deviation to describe the center of your data. Moving on to the next, the center is going to be the data centered around the mean and the mean. And that's going to be two years, not two, it's going to be 29. So I'm going to put a 29 years old right there because that's going to be the average of the middle of the data. The spread of the data around the center is going to be, hmm, that's a really good question because they never taught us that. I'm not going to make y'all do mean absolute deviation because it's quite brutal. I looked it up here. And this right here, that's the formula for finding mean absolute deviation. Looks kind of scary, doesn't it? And the way you would do it is you would first find the mean. So on this set of data right here, the mean was 16. And then you had to select each data point and find the distance from the mean that they are. You'd add up those distances from the mean together, and that gives you the 16 this time, which is different from the other 16 we got, and then you divide that by the number of data points and you would get the mean absolute deviation of 2.67. We're not going to do that. I'm not that mean to you. I'm mean. I'm not that mean. So let's take and go back to where we were, and I'm just going to be curious. Let's say, I don't know, try that one. Mean absolute deviation is what we need. I got a lucky guess there, didn't I? Uh, you don't have to find mean absolute deviation, but you, you do need to find the inner quartile range if that's going to be your answer. Next, we're going to look at interpreting histograms. You can also describe the distribution of histograms, including symmetric, clusters, gaps, and peaks. A cluster is defined as when data are all grouped together. So that's going to be an important vocab term. A gap occurs when there are no data data values, so any place that you have a hole in your bars, there's no bars connecting each other. 
a peak is going to be the most frequently occurring interval of the data in the data set. So there's three new vocab terms. The data were collected of some of the buildings in Seattle, Washington and is displayed in a histogram. Select each button to see the example of a cluster, a gap, or a peak. So first off, a peak, that one is going to be this right here. The peak is your highest point. It makes sense, just like a mountain peak. So your peak is going to be between 400 and 499 feet. The next is going to be the gap. It takes place right here where there's no buildings between 800 and 899 feet. And then your cluster. Your cluster is going to range from 400 to 799. That's this block of data that are all stuck together. So in the majority of the data, excuse me, data falls into that. And then there's this one super tall building right here that's separate from everybody else. I think that's a good place to end part one of this video. We're going to come back and do our very last video of the school year, part two, where we're going to continue our study of how to interpret histograms. I'll see you in our last video.